Dad, steam engines powered the Industrial Revolution, right? But how did they actually work mechanically? Good question, Steve. At the heart of a steam engine is thermal energy conversion. You start by boiling water in a boiler, producing high-pressure steam. That steam is routed to a cylinder where it pushes a piston back and forth. So it's like an internal combustion engine, but the expansion comes from steam? Exactly. Except steam engines are external combustion. The combustion happens in a furnace, which heats a boiler. The steam enters one side of the piston chamber and pushes it, then exits through an exhaust valve, making way for more steam. How does that back and forth motion turn wheels, though? Great point. The piston connects to a crankshaft via a connecting rod. As the piston moves linearly, the crankshaft converts that into rotational motion, which drives the wheels, or a flywheel, or even a generator. So it's all pressure and volume changes governed by thermodynamics? Exactly. Mostly the Rankine cycle. High pressure steam expands, does work on the piston, then condenses back to water in a condenser if it's a closed loop system. In locomotives, exhaust steam is often just vented. Were there any tricks to improve efficiency? Plenty, like compound steam engines, which pass steam through multiple cylinders of increasing size to extract more work. And superheating the steam to raise its temperature beyond the boiling point improves energy density. It's wild that such elegant mechanics could power entire cities. That's why steam was king for over a century, Steve. A masterpiece of thermomechanics.